you so much for joining us. Uh, we're just waiting for Nate and Donnie to join us, and then we can kick off our final session today. How are you, Austin? I'm doing great. How are you? Can you hear me all right? Good. Yeah, absolutely. Loud Excellent. and clear. So I, so I guess you were involved with that uh, Five Minutes From Home campaign? Yes, indeed. We were uh, uh, fortunate to be a part of it and uh, work closely with uh, with Nate and the Portal A team to, to bring it to life. And uh, hopefully when we all come out of this uh, crisis on the other side, we can uh, we can do more of it together because that's that's yeah. currently the plan. <clears throat> yeah. Outstanding. Love, love that series. Hey, Donnie, how are you today? I am doing well. Can you hear me? You are coming through loud and clear. We'll just wait for Nate. Fantastic. Perfect. Hello. All right, Nate, we have you. Fantastic. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining all of us. A very quick intro. So we have Austin Schumacher from Lyft. We have uh, Donnie Doran from Brave Software. Uh, and we have Nate Hoteling. 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 Correct? <laughs> I'm close. Close enough, for sure. You know what? It, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get it right. Um, but thank you so much for uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and Nate is joining us, uh, you know, from Portal A as well. Um, and, and so appreciate that. And uh, we'll pass it over to you guys uh, to have the next set of conversations. Thanks so Great. much. Yeah, thanks you so much for um, the setup here. So um, why don't we go around the horn to start? And we're going to start with Austin. If you don't mind, kind of introducing yourself, giving a bit about your background, what you do at Lyft, and then you know Nate will do the same, and then and then I'll go after, and that's how we'll kick it off. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, so I'm Austin Schumacher. Uh, I head up our uh, entertainment and culture marketing team at Lyft. Uh, I've been at Lyft uh, for a little over seven years, and uh, have uh, been lucky enough to build out this team uh, while while being at the company. And what entertainment marketing uh, is at Lyft is uh, a combination of things. One of which is influencer marketing. Uh, the other is entertainment partnerships uh, across TV, film, music, and sports. Uh, and the third is original content. Uh, and, and we've been uh, lucky enough to do uh, some, some great work together with Nate and his team on the original content side, uh, but happy to talk about uh, all of it today. Great. Go ahead, Nate. Great. Uh, so I'm Nate Hodling. Uh, I am the co-founder and executive producer at Portal A. Uh, we are a content agency um, with offices in San Francisco, where I'm based, and down in LA. Um, and uh, we got started about 10 years ago, um, you know, coming from traditional entertainment uh, and, and media companies and just kind of seeing that it was all being done backwards and in a way that wasn't speaking to our generation. So um, we launched a company that is really about creating content built for the age of social and, and for a new new type of audience with new level of, of control and ability to tune you out. Uh, and uh, yeah, have, have sort of built it brick by brick and, um, you know, do a lot of partnerships with talent around their YouTube uh, channel and, and presence and and the one with Stefan through which we've launched a few shows kind of led us to work with Lyft and and uh, we'll you know talk more about that. Awesome, perfect. So uh, I'll be moderating today. I'll just quickly introduce myself. So I'm Donnie Devoren. I'm head of brand partnerships and sales at, at Brave. Um, I'll just give a little bit of background on Brave. Many of you may be users of the Brave browser. Um, it's, if you're not, it's similar to Chrome, but the key difference is it protects your privacy. So you're completely anonymous when you use the browser. Um, and some of the reasons that people do use the browser besides the privacy part, that it's lightning fast when you use it, the pages load super fast, um, saves on your battery life and, and, and a bunch of other uh, benefits. And another thing is you can get rewarded as a consumer if you do opt in to see ads, um, you can actually get rewarded like a, in a frequent flyer mile. And so that's kind of the B2C angle of it, that there's a browser that you can use. And from a B2B perspective, we have privacy protecting ad units that perform incredibly well for marketers. And when I see privacy protecting, we're able to basically uh, target users and um, do it in a, in, a, in a private way. And so I could, I could go into a lot of detail about that. But the last thing I'll share is that uh, the browser is growing really fast. We have about 14 million users. We're growing about a million users a month, and it was started by uh, Brendan Eich, and Brendan wrote JavaScript in 1995. He was the co-founder of Mozilla and Firefox and founded Brave about uh, five years ago. So um, now we're going to mostly focus on, on Lyft and, and Portal A. So why don't we um, jump over to you, Austin? So we're going to like start broad today and talk about entertainment marketing. Then we'll kind of get into this you know COVID world that we're living in, and, and, and then we'll, we'll move on from there. So 
Um, you know, Austin, if you wouldn't mind like defining how you see entertainment marketing and then, um, you know, really the role of entertainment marketing plays at Lyft would be, would be great. Yeah, sounds good. So the way we think about entertainment is it's a channel through which we can tell our story. Uh, and, and the goal of our team, the mission of what we're trying to do across these three pillars is uh, making sure that Lyft is really at the center of culture. And, and you know, we want to move Lyft uh, as, as far uh, towards this idea of a lifestyle brand as we can uh, and make sure that Lyft is top of mind, but also make sure that uh, we're helping to contextualize our brand story. So um, as part of the brand marketing team, part of our role is exactly that. How do we how do we tell the story uh, of Lyft in the best possible way? How do we reinforce our values? How do we make sure that we're working with partners who understand and believe in the mission and it can help reinforce that mission through content, through partnership, through co-marketing activities, um, et cetera. So uh, entertainment for us really you know, runs the gamut across uh, original content, partner content, uh, placements and integrations, entertainment partnerships, influencer marketing, and, and all of those channels uh, we believe are culturally relevant uh, and, and again, channels through which we can tell our story and, and, and continue to build the brand. Got it. And, you know, kind of leading into Portal A, um, just like a follow up question to that is that, you know, you want to work with companies that support that vision and, and that mission. What was that exact um, vision and, and how did Portal A, um, you know, see into that? Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, we've uh, we've been lucky to be able to work with the Portal A team uh, and unanimous on uh, on a show that um, they created called Five Minutes from Home uh, with Steph Curry. Uh, and I'll let Nate talk a little bit more about the genesis of the show. But uh, we came on board as producers um, for season two. Uh, and uh, again, if, if if and when we uh, we come out of this crisis on the other side, uh, we're we're excited to to make more of that content together. Um, but. The idea is that stories happen in vehicles all the time. And in this particular case, uh, at the end of a game, Steph gets in a car with uh, with a celebrity friend and, and engages in conversation. And the way that it's that it's relevant and meaningful to Lyft is not only uh, the that, that those conversations happen in the car, but conversations can happen around the community, can happen around what is meaningful to this this particular talent, these friends uh, in their community. And, and a lot of those uh, a lot of those conversations center around what's meaningful to us, which is how do we provide transportation access to people who need it most across those communities? How does transportation shape communities? Uh, and so lots of those conversations uh, are really interesting and, and start to reinforce what Lyft is all about. Um, so that's 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 why we've been involved and uh, and we've we've uh, been really Really happy with the results of the show. Uh, it, it performs extremely well, and, um, and again, I'll let Nate talk a little bit more about the genesis of it and, and provide some more color. Perfect. Let's do that, Nate. Tell us about the genesis of the show. Um, yeah. So, you know, we, like I said, we started our company to make awesome stuff that that fan that people wanted to watch and kind of cut against the grain, at least at the time, of interruptive advertising that was replacing. Um, you know, getting in the way of, of your desired experience. And so um, we were very early into that trend. And honestly, like the first few years, we would meet with brands and they'd say, oh, yeah, like we get it. We, you know, we don't want to be um, ramming a message down people's throats. Like we, we would never do that. And then when the, you know, push came to shove, it was always, wait a second, like we're just telling a story here. We're not, well, there's no slogan or tagline or, um, you know, and, and people would kind of default back to their, uh, to what they were comfortable with. Um, so it's taken us a while to kind of be out in the marketplace enough to connect with brands that have this evolved point of view. Um, and I think, you know, Lyft is definitely one of those, uh, one, like truly the leader um, in this area. And I think definitely, you know, it seems to start with the CEO and Austin knows more about this than I do, but the CEO and, and the whole leadership just being bought this idea of like being involved in culture. Um, and then Austin and his team um, kind of building that out in this super methodical way. And I think when the first time we sat down together was at South by Southwest, I think, and it was after a, a screening of Book Smart when there was that amazing scene in the lift um, that was kind of like a little raunchy and edgy, but it was taking place in a lift, and uh, it's just like a super memorable scene. And so that was a light bulb moment for us that we could do something really uh, fantastic together. Um, and so 
On the five minutes or home side, um, we had started this relationship with Stephen Curry and his team at Unanimous about three years ago. Uh, they wanted to launch a YouTube channel and, and kind of do it in a big way. Uh, and we'd work with them on a couple um, branded campaigns previously. So uh, we laid out, you know, the, the way we see these partnerships is really like kind of programming a mini TV network um, and, you know, establishing it with a big fun video and then having shows that you are constantly releasing um, through the channel. So Five Minutes from Home um, was one of the first shows that we greenlit together. Uh, it's a, a talk show that takes place in the back of a lift or, you know, a back of a sprinter van for season one. And then we adapted uh, uh, adapted it to be to be in a lift in season two. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really just a, a free flowing conversation and it's always after a game. So Stefan is riding off a high of, of a win, usually a win two years ago, definitely a win. Um, and, uh, and you know, it just kind of was this perfect place to have a conversation about, um, Oakland and, uh, uh, family and food and, and, you know, all these things and, and kind of set that, um, right in a lift. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a really awesome, uh, partnership and, you know, we were all set to do another season and then obviously, uh, you know, it's hard to ride around in anything nowadays, but, um, <laughs> hopefully to get it back, back going soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. It's a good segue to, uh, you know, where I was thinking about, which is, Obviously, you know, COVID coronavirus has changed a lot and every business out there needs to adapt. And so at Port LA, from like a production standpoint, um, tell, talk to me about some of the ways that you've needed to adapt in this COVID world. Yeah. Um, so we were fortunate within the production world of having done many quote unquote remote productions previous to, to COVID. Um, it had been really part of, you know, part of our skill set and something that, um, you know, we prefer to do large in-person productions, but because we work with talent all around, all around the world, um, it's definitely part of our skill set. So right when everything kind of hit and a lot of our physical productions were going to cancel or, or pushed, um, we realized it was kind of time to, to cement that. So we put together um, a, a deck that just sort of codified our approach. Um, and uh, yeah, it's basically doing a lot. Uh, a lot of what we do now is over um, uh, over video chat and, and, and Zoom. Uh, you know, we are producing a show right now with Carmelo Anthony uh, called What's in Your Glass, where he has a glass of wine. Um, with Jamie Foxx and Jimmy Butler and people and, and all takes place either on IG live or, or YouTube live and, and through, through technology that we um, have access to. Um, and then for certain talent, we do, um, you know, we'll do a drop kit where we send them or uh, like leave at their house uh, all the equipment they'll need fully plug and play um, and have them and then send us the footage we pick up the equipment um, and shoot that way so um yeah we've tried to stay nimble and i think you know we're, we're continuing to, to innovate but we've been happy with uh you know there's definitely still such a demand for content out there that um you know i think people are just going to get better and better at, at finding ways to to do that got it totally um, so on Austin, on, on your side, um, obviously, you know, this kind of category of entertainment marketing is very different than uh, a Google AdWords ad where you can measure a click. Um, so as you're producing content, how do you measure success and go about, you know, showing management that it has a powerful ROI? Yeah. So um, it's a great question and something that I think as an industry, we all we all talk about quite a bit, and, and there is no silver bullet to measurement uh, for, for brand marketing, and, and uh, the same is true for, for content as well, creating original content. Um, that being said, to Nate's point, we do have uh, founders uh, and, and a leadership team who believes in the value of brand marketing, uh, and by extension of that, uh, certainly entertainment marketing and the value that entertainment can, can bring in terms of brand building. Uh, how we measure success, um, kind of depends on the type of, of campaign or product that we're working on, whether it's experiential or content or an influencer campaign, and there's different metrics of success for each of these. I think in the content space, and obviously we want to make sure that people are seeing uh, the content that we create. Uh, and so there's there's certainly viewership and engagement, but, but something that is, uh, I think, universal across all the work we do is how do we drive 
how do we drive buzz and awareness for the brand? And one one um, way that we look at that is through earned media, which is sort of a proxy for for buzz. If we can drive interest uh, from from an earned media standpoint, if we, if we can get some great press around what we're doing, that's helpful to to us as well as any partners that we're working with. Um, and being able to help uh, amplify the story that we're trying to tell. Uh, through earned is something that we that we try to it's, it's a goal that we that we have across all the work that we do um so you know any metric that we can measure we we do uh, but we don't want to just have a bunch of numbers we want to be able to to tell a story and, and a big part of that is are people do people care about the content you're putting out uh what is the sentiment that we're seeing across social and and uh what's the volume of our media placement and the quality of our media placement that we're getting from each of these projects Got it. Got it. And, 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 and Nate, do you think about measurement any different from the production side versus what, you know, Austin's going through on, on the lift side, on the brand side? No, I mean, we, we try to sit down at the beginning of a project and understand what all of our partners um, objectives are. And, you know, I, I think having worked with the lift team for, uh, you know, over a year, we have a really good understanding of, uh, of their philosophy around, um, kind of hard metrics and, and the more soft uh, stuff as well. I think Austin brought up sentiment, which to us is is really important and something that um, that can be tracked pretty well on social. So, you know, the the lift, uh, the five minutes from home series had a 98.5% uh, uh, like to dislike ratio on YouTube across, I think, 3 million views on the whole series. So. That that for anyone who knows the trolls on YouTube, like that, that's pretty unheard of. Um, and I think when you're talking about, um, you know, brand integration uh, on the far end of it, it would be like someone holding up a can of Pepsi, and and the way that that type of endorsement is really um, uh, shot down on YouTube, like wholesale, doesn't matter what who the talent is, who the brand is, like people really hate that. Um, so to see. Um, us be able to still tell a story um, about the brand and, and have this compelling show, um, but have that kind of sentiment was definitely a sign that something had clicked. Got it. Um, you know, Austin, for, for you, I'm sure that there's no, you know, there's no lack of uh, talent out there and celebrities and, you know, everybody in sports. And is there a process that you go through to decide, like, who's the talent that you're going to use for a specific, you know, campaign? Yeah, so I think the most important thing that we uh, think about when we're talking about who who do we work, who can we work with, who do we want to work with, uh, is you know is there is there some brand alignment? Is are there partners out there who share our values? Are there partners out there whose stories uh, might intersect with our own? Uh, what's their what are their goals and mission? Because lots of talent out there are trying to build their own brands, and so finding those partners who uh, either share uh, values certainly have an understanding of what we're trying to do as a company and believe what we're trying to do as a company is is really important and then thinking about how we build long-term relationships we're trying uh, we try hard as a brand to not just create transactions when we're talking about talent or influencer marketing uh, we think about them as building long-term relationships so we don't want to just do a, a one-off piece of content uh, if we can avoid it we want to create multiple seasons of content together we want to think about <clears throat> if a talent the music artist, as an example, uh, is is willing to work with us on some content. Are there other things that we can do beyond creating that content that's going to drive value for the partner as well? So, is there an, is there a record that's coming out that we can that we can play a role in helping to promote through some interesting uh, experiences or content? How do we provide value on both sides? So we're not just writing a check, and we and we we tend not to just write a check to to talent. We think about how can we look at this from a, from a long term relationship standpoint. Well, we're providing as much value for you building your brand and promoting various IP to to that partner, also helping to support the things that we're doing. And I think you know how that how that looks currently. Uh, we all know things have shifted drastically over the last couple of months, and so we're all going through these these changes uh, and needing to have that adaptability. Um, you know, we're we're focused as a team and as a company right now, almost primarily on an initiative that we have called Lift Up, which houses all of our advocacy efforts, uh, and it's something that we launched in January. Uh, with LeBron James in New York, and and uh, uh, that program was specifically around how do we provide transportation access uh, to students through bike share memberships. And in New York, that's City Bike, uh, which Lyft owns and operates. And so uh, that that program is is a piece of this larger uh, Lift Up initiative, which is about how do we provide transportation access to those who need it most. 
uh, knowing that transportation access is a huge barrier to upper mobility. Uh, and so that's a huge, that, that is core to our mission, a huge part of what we all try to do. And I think in this time of, of COVID, um, uh, it's, it's more important than ever to make sure that we're providing access to transportation to people who need it, to frontline workers, um, to get to their jobs. We're also providing uh, delivery services, which is something that Lyft has, hasn't engaged with in the past. Um, how, so we, we quickly stood up a delivery program to make sure that we're getting uh, critical supplies delivered uh, to organizations or hospitals, groceries uh, delivered to underserved populations or at-risk populations. And so as it relates to entertainment, we focused on how do we work with our some of these long-term partners uh, in helping to make sure that people are aware that these programs exist, that they have access to transportation if they need it, but also thinking about how do we help the the, the talent and our, our celebrity partners in what they're trying to do. We all know uh, everyone is trying to figure out or has already figured out what they want to do. They might need a partner to help bring that that goal to life, whether it's delivery or whether whether transportation can play a role in that. So, so we've been uh, fortunate in being able to uh, lean on some of these long-term partnerships to figure out how do we support lift up, but also support those initiatives that are that are important to to the partner so that we can all contribute to, to what's going on in the community right now. Got it. That makes a ton of sense. Um, I'll keep asking questions, but um, if any of the people that are listening, if you guys want to start um, bringing in your questions, I'll, I'll get to those in in a moment. Um, so Nate, on, on your side, when it comes to talent, how do you even go about, you know, creating a relationship with, you know, some of these people that are celebrities, they're, they're famous? Is there, you know, do you have like a network of them? Is there a process to do that? Um, yeah, I think most of the relationships start with a talent deciding that, you know, taking this leap into, um, I, I guess you'd call it like a social video strategy more broadly. I mean, usually our partnerships center on a YouTube channel just as the most tangible um, way we're working together, but it really crosses all of their owned um, properties. And it is a, it is a mindset shift because a lot of many talent are happy to just do a single post friend here or, um, you know, show up in an event or do a TV spot. But when, when talent decided they want to release their own shows uh, and their own content or their own vlogs or what have you, um, then they start looking for a partner to help them help them do that. And we're, you know, one of the teams that have kind of has kind of dif differentiated themselves in, in this world. So, um, yeah, we have, uh, a, you know, a long list. We're, we're wrapped at WME, and so a lot of the relationships come through there, or just people who've seen our work with with Stefan, Carmelo, Odell Beckham, Adam Rippon and others uh and uh and just kind of start uh start simple in terms of what their goals are um and then we have a whole process that we go through to kind of figure out if it's a right fit for us i think a lot of a lot of the talent we're currently looking at are sort of younger skewing the, the sort of rising stars one of the biggest talent on youtube over the last couple of years is a guy, a guy named noah schnapp um who is the kid in stranger things um and maybe for for our generation and above um maybe not like the person you'd think of as one of the you know top 20 celebrities in the world but he was the fastest growing um uh celebrity on youtube last year and uh and yeah so so there's some like metrics we take into account about who's going to be a good partner that's more than just kind of who would be in people magazine got it that makes sense um Let's go into like the distribution of the content, Austin. Um, how do you decide like the best channels for distribution? You talked about you know YouTube as an example, but um, you know how do you, how do you go about that? Yeah, um, so you, we need to have a plan from from the get go as, as to how we're going to distribute the content. I think you know that is it's 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 one of the core pieces of putting a product uh, you know a content product together obviously and i think making sure that we're aligned with our partners and in, in in making sure that we're leveraging all of the channels that we have at our disposal so that's you know lifts channels the brands channels the partners channels production companies channels plus talents channels and and you know for us it's uh it, it the, the the final goal is making sure that people see the content uh but also uh, making sure that we can leverage those channels from the get-go uh, to make sure that as many people as possible are seeing it, um, and you know, also uh, making sure that uh, we don't necessarily have to just uh, rely on paid media. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, whatever the content that we're putting out is relevant to 
each partner's audiences. Uh, and so it's important that talent's posting and promoting the, the content that we put out there uh, because that's where the, the majority of their audience is. So I think making sure that there's alignment among the partners distributing that content and coordination uh, when the content goes live uh, is super important. And then, uh, you know, working together to make sure that press teams are aligned, uh, making sure that our media can be a potential uh, distribution platform as well or a distribution channel for the content. So if you secure an exclusive with a particular outlet, maybe they get, they, maybe they have, you know, a window where they can uh, host that content live first, which might drive some interest and engagement among other earned media outlets. Uh, so I think it's, again, it's a coordinated effort across all the partners involved in creating content um, and, and something that we, um, that, that we organize early on in the process. Yeah. Is there ever like content out there where you think it's just going to get a ton of earned and like it doesn't and you have to like put a bunch of money against it? <laughs> I think if you're not, if you're not getting traction early on, that doesn't necessarily mean you should throw a bunch of money at it. It might mean yeah, yeah. May, maybe this thing isn't going to stick. Maybe this wasn't the right content. Maybe we missed from a from a creative standpoint. Uh, and so you know, again, you know, not not every eyeball is 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 uh, you know created equal. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna you're gonna drive more value if you're if you have to pay money for people to see it. Obviously, it's important to spark some interest and you can start to see some of that payoff early on but uh i, I think you can also you can you can also tell relatively early on if the creative is landing um based on engagement based on sentiment etc um and and so you know paid media we don't look at it as as a crutch or something mm. that we have to that we have to do it's like if, if something is if something is landing well you'll know and and at that point it might uh, help to start to fuel that fire with additional paid media yeah. I mean, Nate, from your side, has it ever happened where like you spend a lot of time and energy producing something and it's just, it's just not sticking. It's not taking off. That's never happened. Never. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. These are yeah, all hypotheticals all here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I'll, 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 let's talk about you it. Want to skip that. I can here. go to the Q and a, <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it happens all the time. And uh, yeah, I think part of the, the thrill and, and part of kind of why we, um, got into this space is that, you know, it's an art and a science. And, um, sometimes you do miss a lot of times what we find is you miss because of timing, um, just the, the speed of social media, um, you know, something pops or something negative pops related to a talent we're working with. fits in the same time frame as a campaign we're going to launch. And all of a sudden, like, everything we tried to do is just immediately a uh, part of that swirl, like every comment on YouTube or uh, like every, like all the sentiment on, on social is shifted. That's sort of irregardless of content. And, and it's, it's the cruel thing in some ways about social media that sometimes people don't even engage with what you're actually presenting. They engage with like an, the idea of it. Um, so yeah, I think we, we see that a lot. And uh, I think you have to, um, you know, take some risks to, to, you know, try to try to, you know, to get those wins, but, um, it's definitely, uh, not every single time you succeed. Exactly. Yeah. I hear you. Um, all right. So let me go to some, um, Q and a, and in this first one, Austin, you kind of alluded to this with, uh, talking about uh, city bike, but what is the one thing that Lyft has done for its consumers and community, a uh, community that you're especially proud of? Um, uh, I think the, yeah, I think the, the, the thing that we're, we as a company are incredibly proud of is this program lift up and, you know, it's, it, it was launched in January, uh, and we have, uh, we have expanded it over these last couple of months and, and really focused as a company on it during, during the crisis. But, um, lift up is, is something that, uh, while it's a sort of formalized brand name uh, and, and initiative, it's something that the company has done from the get-go. And one of the reasons I'm proud to work at the company is that our founders, you know, set out with a very clear mission early on, over a decade ago, and they haven't they haven't strayed from that at all. So the mission and the values; these aren't marketing tools. Uh, they're really core to what the company is all about. Uh, and lift up uh, again is sort of a, a recent way to frame up all of this work. It's it's how do we provide access to transportation to people who need it, uh, whether that's in a car through our you know, regular uh, uh, traditional ride sharing or on a bike through a bike share programs, a scooter, working with transit agencies, et cetera. So uh, I'm, I'm really proud of Lift Up. 
uh, in the way that we launched that in January, and then the extension of the program through through COVID um, and and beyond. Uh, you know, we're in this crisis phase right now, and. Uh, uh, you know, we all know we're we're, we're going to start moving into this next phase, which is about how do we get America back on its feet. Uh, you know, the devastating um, job numbers uh, are something uh, that you know is, is on everyone's mind, and we're thinking about as a company how do we play a role in making sure that we can help people get to job interviews, get to jobs, uh, to help them get get back on their feet, and then looking ahead a few months, what does the election look like? And what is the role that Lyft can play in the election and making sure that people can get to the polls? In 2016, 15 million people didn't vote because they didn't have access to transportation. So we see that as, as a huge opportunity to uh, help with civic engagement, uh, to help you know, shape, shape the community uh, and, and play a role in, in, uh, in historic elections. So uh, throughout the, you know, th the rest of 2020 and beyond, I think Lift Up is going to be uh, a really, really important initiative for us and uh, something that I'm, I'm super proud to be part of. Yeah, I commend you for that work. That sounds really important as we, as we come out of this. Uh, the, the next question is actually for me. Am I allowed to answer a question? I, I will read it and answer it. When you're doing sales mm -hmm. efforts for Brave, what are things that Brave you are focusing on to deliver to potential clients and, and partners? So I guess that question is about like our mm -hmm. advertising uh, products. So I won't make this about me, but I will answer that, that next question. But uh, basically, in, in our marketing world right now, privacy is becoming a big deal. And there's GDPR and there's CCPA and Chrome is removing a cookie. So I think that marketers are trying to think like how do i market in this new world um not the new world of, of covid but the new world of of privacy uh when consumers are demanding it and so we have a series of advertising products like a push notification or when you hit a new tab on the browser um a brand can basically own that page um and when brands um when consumers see that they're they're not being tracked like they are when you're searching the web in in, in the regular ad tech world uh but the cool thing about it is that we can still track performance uh we can see like the browser sees everything that you're doing so it can report on things like conversions and how many people um clicked on an ad um so i won't make this about me but i did want to answer that because that was the next question um so the next one is for austin um how do you uh, evaluate, we kind of talked about this one. How do you evaluate new sports and entertainment partnership opportunities? Is there anything else you wanted to add? Because I, I did ask that earlier. Yeah, I think um, just to reinforce, it's about how do you how do you find that intersection between what the talent or the partner is trying to achieve and what Lyft is trying to achieve, as opposed to to, to saying we want to work with this partner and we we're gonna we're gonna write a check to to make that happen. It's about is there is there something uh, that that we can do to help support the goals of the partner at the same time that they can help us. And so, in the case of LeBron James in January with Lift Up, um, it was it was about uh, finding that that intersection point between the goal of Lift Up, which is providing transportation access and making sure that transportation is seen as a form of empowerment, uh, and LeBron James James's goal of doing doing the same thing. His his company and the brands that he's built have all been about empowerment. Uh, and he also happened to uh, happens to be a huge bike advocate uh, and, and has um, made public statements about growing up in Akron and the value that the bike uh, that, that a bike gave to him uh, as a kid. Uh, and to him, a bike was freedom. It enabled him to get to places that he might not have been able to get to without having uh, access to transportation. And so we saw that as a really interesting, um, you know, intersection point between what we we're trying to do with Lift Up, uh, and his, and he's become become um, a really great partner in helping to tell that story. So again, it's it's how do you find those uh, those those goal? How do you find the intersection of those goals uh, as opposed to just saying, you know, that looks like an interesting person to partner with. Let's just write him a check and make make something happen. Um, and 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 I think that approach is uh, the, the, the former approach and, and finding those intersection points is, is how you can create trust with the partner and, and also build a long-term relationship that isn't rooted in just transactions. Yeah, yeah that makes, makes sense. Um, Nate, I'll ask the next question of, of you here. So, uh, and you can choose Lyft here if you want, or maybe there's another project you want to talk about. But the question is, if you had to pick a favorite, um, you know, past or current partnership, is there a specific, um, you know, uh, project that you was like one of your favorites um besides lift <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to think if there anyone any other fish in the sea um we, we've done some cool work with uh hbo um around westworld and uh, uh you know their their marketing team 
you know, also thinks uh, in, in this in the same evolved way, I would say. Um, and we did a, a partnership with a creator um, named Simone Gertz, where she she created robots, um, uh, shitty robots is like her is her thing, and she created robots sort of in the West World um, mode and, and put them in that world, and and it was it was funny, but it also like got super fans excited, um, and was all in the language of YouTube, so. Uh, you know, it, it was it was fun to see, you know, HBO, Super Premium, YouTube, everyone, you know, had, came from its cat video roots and people sometimes still think of it that way. So um, it, it was fun to see us be able to bridge that gap. Yeah, great. And it, 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 this next one's good for, for Austin, because like if you put your consumer hat on and you're looking at other marketing and other brands that are doing a really good job of entertainment marketing and being authentic with their consumers. Is there a specific um, brand that's like your Northern Light or one that you aspire to to be like? And, and what it, what it kind of examples have they done? Yeah, um, there are a lot of examples. I think you know, with all of us being focused uh, uh, on COVID and looking at the way that. Uh, different brands or nonprofits or other organizations are are being involved. I think we've all started to see that a lot of it is starting to look and sound the same, maybe be jaded by some of it. And so the brands that stick out, one of them that comes to mind uh, was Frito-Lay, which was a surprising one. They put out a really great piece of content um, to, to show what they're doing for the community. And it was actually not about their products. It wasn't about uh, selling Frito-Lay products. It was about people and making sure that uh, that everyone's reminded that at the end of the day this isn't about brands but it's about people and while while you can you can still you can call it an ad and it was coming from a brand it felt uh, I don't know it, it felt refreshing it felt like something that um, that you wouldn't expect from them and and, uh, and and as a consumer gave me more respect for them as a company and they, they did talk about some of the things that they're doing in the community um, but it but it wasn't telling you um, what what to do it wasn't it wasn't there wasn't a huge call to action it was just about showcasing the important work uh, that's happening on the ground and, and reminding people uh, that that there's that there's a, a very human element to what's going on uh, and to be just to be uh, cognizant of that and, and reminded of that. Got it, uh, Ritesh. You want me to wrap it up or ask one more question? Yeah, I think you can do one quick one. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the last question for you, Austin. So a lot of people are, are listening here and they're going, oh, great for Lyft. You know, their CEO is supportive of entertainment marketing, but, you know, they maybe work for a brand where they don't get the resources. They don't get buy-in from, from management. Um, what, what things have you done in your career um, at Lyft that allowed you to, or what, what advice would you give to that brand manager that wants to sell in entertainment marketing, but is not getting the support of their management team? Yeah, so I think there's there's got to be room for experimentation on any brand team. Um, you know, as as we all know, there is no silver bullet of measurement for brand marketing work, um, and uh, growth and brand marketing are starting to are, are starting to to come together uh, at at companies, including our own. Um, but I think there's got to be some room for experimentation. You've got to be able to to have some of those flops, and I think uh, it's important just to remind management and teams that it's okay to put content out in the world that doesn't work. Uh, you're gonna, you're, you're, you're not gonna create, uh, you know, a wildly successful piece of content the first time you put something out. If you, if you do, that's incredible. It's also incredibly lucky. But having, having that ability to experiment is, is super important. So whether you've got leadership that believes in entertainment marketing specifically, um, you know, most most companies believe in brand. I think entertainment and culture is is a big part of what uh, brand building is all about. Uh, but again, uh, it comes down to experimentation, being able to do that and have that leeway. Got it. Well, thank you both, Austin and Nate. That was great. I enjoyed the past uh, forty minutes chatting with you guys. And Ritesh, I'll bring it back to you. Thank you, yeah. guys. Yeah, guys, thank Thanks you very much. much. Yeah, appreciate the time and 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 great uh, great job with the moderation there, Donnie. And uh, thank you, Nate, uh, for adding some perspective on where sort of this amazing idea came for Five Minutes From Home. It's one of my favorite things to watch. So I really hope there's more new content coming, um, especially okay. if we can recreate the Joel Embiid episode. That was fantastic. Oh, wow. I just love yeah, the guy. Yeah. Love the guy. Nice. And uh, yeah, no. And and Austin, thank you so much for your time. And I, you know, I think the one thing which you know stands out about how Lyft is doing things is that virtually every article I read when it comes to Lyft 
Um, there used to be a time when you when you read articles about you know about Lyft or, or the other people. I won't I won't say their names um, in the marketplace. You hear a lot about drivers and and logistics and how much they get paid and complaints and stuff. But what I'm hearing more sort of through this very difficult time period is how your messaging is actually nothing to do with driving. It's got nothing to do with taking people from one spot to another. It's all about making that community difference. Um, all of your campaigns that you talked about, that is the one common element across the board. And like, you know, helping with election is, is brilliant. I, I love it. And, you know, talk about making an impact directly, you know, to, to everyday people's lives, I think. So kudos to you and your team, you know, for Thanks coming for up that. with some re really cool, yeah, some really cool content. And it doesn't feel like you're just a ride-sharing company. Um, I think it feels a lot more than that. So thank you so much. I certainly, uh, you know, got to uh, take that in a bit more listening to you talk today. So Cheers, for thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. We hope to run into you at some point again in a physical world. Uh, thanks so much for your time, and to all of our participants today, everyone that's viewed in. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as you know, Brand Innovators produces these live casts multiple times a week. We have another fantastic topic uh, that's coming up uh, on marketing innovation. Please uh, feel free to tune into that as well. And everyone that is registered today, if you would like to view this particular conversation on demand, you'll be able to do that. Uh, you'll receive an email uh, with those details on how to do it. Uh, but otherwise, thank you again for joining us all today. It was my pleasure to be your host. Uh, good afternoon. Have a wonderful evening and bye from Toronto. Great. Cheers. Thanks so much. Bye -bye. See you guys. Bye-bye.